It's Parm King with a role-playing game thought for you. And this was inspired by my Patreon members. It's theme-based game playing and limiting races and classes. Now, over the course of the last year, I've been uh, creating additional expanded content and guides for Curse of Strahd, both in PDF format, Foundry Adventure modules, even some embarrassing voice acting. But one common question I get asked by Patreon members often is, what races and classes should I include in my campaign? In fact, I even got this question this morning by a Patreon member. One of my players wants to play a goblin. Is that going to be a problem? Well, let's talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and I will tell you my approach that may help you both with Curse of Strahd or whatever campaign or adventure you're running, whether it's pre-written or homebrew. Now, Dungeons and Dragons is the super story, the smorgasbord of role-playing games, fantasy role-playing games for that matter. I mean, over the last four decades, all kinds of different classes, races, subclasses, sub-races, half-races, backgrounds, even campaign settings. With the release of Spelljammer, you're gonna be playing Dungeons and Dragons in outer space if you haven't already. Well, you might be asking, what are some of the formulas or ingredients for me to limit races and classes for my campaign or backgrounds? Well, the first thing we're gonna look at is for races and backgrounds. And there's two important ingredients, and we see these ingredients in the real world as well as the fantasy world. Let's use New York City as an example. Now, to expand the diversity of race and background and professions, we need to have two important ingredients. First of all, the system of government, regardless of what kind of government it is, needs to be based on the principles of an open and free society. An open and free society welcomes in the second important ingredient, which is trade and commerce. If we look at New York City, a seaport with a government that's based on an open and free society, welcoming all kinds of people there, that ushers in trade and commerce. People from all over the world move to New York City and trade and work and live in New York City, and that brings the diversity of races and culture to New York City. We see that same thing happen in fantasy role-playing game in Dungeons and Dragons with Waterdeep. Waterdeep has a uh, government is an open and free society with a massive seaport that ushers in trade and commerce. In fact, even in the campaign, there are quests and adventures involving and in trading and commerce in the big city, which is an open and free society. And I imagine in a place like Waterdeep, you're gonna see all kinds of races in Waterdeep, such as Dragonborn and Halfling and Tifling and Elves, because it is a massive open free society with open trade in that huge seaport there. Now, the opposite of that we see in Curse of Strahd. Strahd has been ruling as a tyrant over Barovia as a vampire, Dark Lord vampire, ruling over this place, which has ruled over fear. That limits, you've, you've removed the open and free society. When you remove that, you also remove trade and commerce. The Dark Lord has brought with him his evil mists that isolate Bar Barovia. So now you live in isolation with no trade and commerce. You limit the, the variety of the different races there in Dungeons & Dragons Curse of Strahd campaign. If we take a look at Rules as Written, let's do that right now. This is Rules as Written for Curse of Strahd. Barovians are humans, and all they know that dwarves, elves, halflings, and other civilized races exist Few living Barovians have seen such creatures, let alone interact with them. The reason for that is Strahd has ruled for over, almost 400 years as this Dark Lord with the mist limiting and, and, and isolating the Barovians and living under fear, which, which has eliminated trade and commerce. The only people that trade in Barovia are the Vistani, which are trading wine, and they have a unique relationship with the Dark Lord Strahd. If we continue to read, aside from the secretive dusk elves in Vlaki, by the way, Strahd's pretty much wiped them out, uh, the only non-humans most Barovians are familiar with are the adventures that Strahd have lured to the realm. Now this next session is really important. Barovians thus react to non-human characters the same way most humans in the real world would react to elf, dwarf, half-orc adventures suddenly walking the streets. So Brovian in the village of Brovia, humans seeing a dragonborn walking down the street, it's going to be locking the door, freaking out. It's like, there's dragons in the streets. Strahd's brought dragons to Brovia. We're all going to die. I mean, these people are living in fear there. So it says most such outsiders are scorned, feared, 
or shunned. And this is part of that role-playing element, bringing that verisimilitude to this isolated place. Now, we can also talk about limiting classes and how do you decide how to limit classes. Well, classes is kind of like the theme, you can bring into that theme the tone of the type of game that you want to play. Maybe you want a more uh, medieval type setting and you're going to limit classes to clerics, paladins, bards, and maybe wizards. Or maybe you're running a campaign that's more like kind of Conan, barbarian-ish, low magic fantasy setting, and your races are going to be orcs and goliaths and humans, and the only classes are going to be like fighters and barbarians with a low magic setting. You know, so you're, you're not only picking an atmosphere and theme from the government and open commerce that limit race, but the setting can also lead to certain types of classes. Maybe you want to run a more of a witcher type campaign with like rogues and rangers and, and uh, even limit the type of armor, maybe to certain types of lemur or, uh, leather armor or, or uh, uh, medium type armor and get rid of plate. I mean, you can really set the theme and the campaign uniquely into your, your campaign or adventure that you're setting. Now, I want to conclude this uh, video with what I think is one of the most uh, important things that we, one of our most important responsibilities as Dungeon Master, and that is communication and setting expectations. So if you're looking at player, looking for players for your campaign, make sure that you're clear in your communications and setting expectations. You might say, I'm running a Gothic Horror Curse of Strahd campaign with only humans, uh, elves, halflings, uh, and dwarves as player races, and I'm limiting classes to maybe medieval type of classes in my campaign. The setting is gothic horror, so there's these elements that you may find offensive. It's for mature players only, 18 or over. Or you might say, I'm running my own homebrew version of Curse of Strahd that's kid-friendly, and Strahd is an evil halfling vampire, and all his minions are halflings, and all the Barovians are gnomes, and you, a player, can only be a gnome with these types of classes and backgrounds because you're going to Barovia to free the gnomes from the evil halfling vampire Strahd's evil rule. The point here is you can be as is interesting and flavorful as you want to, but you are still limiting races and classes to fit within the narrative and the theme of the campaign that you're trying to run, whether it's your own homebrew campaign or your version of a pre-written campaign is limiting choices of classes, races, and backgrounds, even maybe armor and weapons and magic items fit within a particular narrative and world that you're trying to create and help bring the verisimilitude to it and help make the game not only easier to manage, but really bring it alive and engaging for the players. They feel like they belong in that world. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, or is it smash the like button and click the subscribe? I forget. Anyway, until next time, this is Parm King out, and may all your roles be critically successful.